Good morning, children. Let us begin our Sunday school. Let us bow down in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have gathered us again this morning to listen to your word. Please open our heart, open our ears, so we may understand what you want us to do in our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we begin our Bible story today, I will have some questions and we can play a little bit of games by answering the questions. Let's begin. Now, let us begin with some pictures that you need to guess. First picture, what is this? It is a classroom. Second one. What is this? It's a cinema. And then this one. It is a horse cart. Well, the first picture is a classroom. So let's imagine it is your first day at school. What would you feel? Imagine it's your first day at school. Would you feel anxious? Hmm. You will feel anxious because you don't know who are your new friends. You don't know who is the teacher. Is he or she going to be nice? Or he or she can be a mean person when they are angry? But after you get to know your friends, your teachers, you will start to enjoy going to school and you'll be very happy. And now, it's time for your mommy and daddy to bring you to a cinema. Have you ever been to a cinema? Well, the movie can be very funny, but when they first started, it was all very dark. It was all so dark, you can't see anything. You cannot even try to grab some popcorn because it's so, so dark. And then you get scared. And not long, you will start asking, Mommy, Daddy, I'm so scared. But then, the music began and the funny movie started. Then you start laughing and you become so happy. And this picture, look at all the children. I bet when they first ride on this horse cart, they were scared because it will be a little bit wobbly and wobbly. And some of them are also scared that it's going too fast and they may fall down. So, they are so scared that it's going too fast and they might fall down and might get hurt. But then, after a while, they become happy because they know now that it's pretty safe and it's kind of fun. So children, based on your guesses just now, there are things that you see that may make you feel worried. But always remember that God is always with us.
us begin our Bible story today. I want you to be comfortable sitting down and let us begin. Moses now is a grown up and he is looking after the flock of sheep of his father in law Jethro. He led them to the far side of the wilderness to graze by a mountain called Horeb. He watched a bush that had caught fire and noticed it did not burn up. So Moses decided to take a look closer. Suddenly, God called to him from inside the burning bush. Moses, here I am, Lord, Moses replied. God told Moses to take off his shoes, for he was on holy ground. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God announced. At this, Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. God told Moses that he had seen the suffering of the Hebrew slaves. He was going to rescue them and lead them to a land of milk and honey where they would be free. Go to Pharaoh and bring my people out of Egypt, God instructed. Moses started making excuses. Who am I to do this? God promised to be with Moses. He also promised that he would make a way for the Hebrews to come and worship him on this mountain. But if I go to the Hebrew leaders, who shall I say sent me? asked Moses. Tell them, I am who I am has sent you. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My name is forever. God instructed Moses to go to the leaders of Israel with the message God was going to rescue them from slavery and lead them to the land he had promised. Moses and the leaders were then to tell Pharaoh to let the Hebrews go and worship the Lord God in the wilderness. Moses still kept making excuses. But what if they won't listen to me? He said. God asked Moses what he held in his hand. A staff, replied Moses. Throw it to the ground said the Lord. When he threw his staff to the ground, it became a snake. Moses was scared and jumped away from it. Reach out your hand and take the snake by the tail, said the Lord. As Moses grabbed the snake's tail, it turned back into a staff. This sign will help them believe, said the Lord God. Now, put your hand inside your cloak. Moses put his hand inside his cloak, but when he pulled it back, out oh, it was white with a terrible skin disease called leprosy. Now, put your hand back in your cloak, God ordered. When Moses pulled his hand out from his cloak, a second time, his hand was healed. If the Hebrew leaders don't believe these two signs, then take some water from Nile River and pour it on the dry ground. I will make the water turn to blood, the Lord told Moses. But Moses still kept making excuses. I find it hard to speak well or very clearly. Who gave people their mouth? replied the Lord. 
I will help you speak and teach you what to say. But Moses still made excuses. Please, send someone else to do this. God was angry with Moses. Your brother Aaron can speak well. He is on his way to meet you. He will be your spokesman. Take your staff in your hand so you will be able to perform miracles. So Moses returned to his father-in-law Jethro and asked his permission to return to his people in Egypt. Go! I wish you well, replied Jethro. Aaron had already been told by God to travel to meet them. Moses put his wife and sons on donkeys, ready for the journey. The Egyptians who remembered what you did and wanted revenge are all dead, God reassured Moses. And the two brothers met up at Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, and welcomed each other. Moses shared with Aaron all that God had told him. Then they all set off for Egypt to tell the Hebrew leaders that God had plans to rescue them. When Moses and Aaron arrived in Egypt, they gathered together with the leaders of the Hebrews to tell them the good news that God was going to deliver them and lead them to the promised land. The leaders and the people bow down to worship God. Then Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh. The God of Israel says, Let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. Who is the Lord that I should obey him? replied Pharaoh. I do not know the Lord and I will not let his people go. Then Moses and Aaron warned Pharaoh, If you do not obey God, he may bring plagues to your country. Pharaoh became very angry. On the same day, he gave orders to the slave drivers to make the Hebrews work harder. They were given straws to make bricks and had to collect their own straw while still making as many bricks as before. The slaves become exhausted searching for straw and making bricks. When they could not make their quota, the slave drivers beat them. The Hebrew leaders complained to Moses and Aaron, May God judge you. You have made Pharaoh hate us and our lives are in danger now. Moses was very sad and he spoke to God. Why have you brought trouble on these people? I spoke to Pharaoh in your name, but you have not rescued them. God then answered, My mighty hand will drive the people out of Egypt. I keep my promises. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Moses reported this to the Hebrew leaders, but they were too scared by their bad treatment to listen to him. God told Moses and Aaron to visit Pharaoh again. If the Hebrews won't listen to me, why should Pharaoh? replied Moses, especially as I can't speak very well. So now, Moses is comforted by God's word, not only to believe that God is going to help him to talk to the Hebrew leaders and also to Pharaoh, but he also believed that God is going to deliver Israel people, the Hebrew people, from Egypt. 
he is the one who is strong enough and powerful enough to help him to go through everything. So now, do you want to be like Moses who is strengthened by God's power and know that God is going to protect us? Let us review our memory verse taken from the Bible. Thus say the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 8 verse 1 b Let us do a review on the catechism questions. We will go through question 31 to 35. Question 31. What was the sin of our first parents? Eating the forbidden fruit. Question 32. Who tempted them to the sin? The devil tempted Eve and she gave the fruit to Adam. Question 33. What befell our first parents when they had sinned? Instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. Question 34. Did Adam act for himself alone in the covenant of words? No, he represented all his future generations. Question 35. What effect had the sin of Adam on all mankind? All mankind are born in a state of sin and misery. Hi everyone, this is the end of our Sunday school. Now let us sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Again, again.